January 1st of that year, one of my buddies that talked to me going to Marine Corps shot me in the face with the 37 Magnum. It went in right here and came out back there at uh, about up close. And, uh, States Marine Corps and the reason I joined the United States Marine Corps was that every one of my family, my cousins and I had been in the Air Force, the Army, the Navy over the years, generations. We fought in every war back to the 1700s, 1400s my son has researched on our genealogy. But anyway, I walked up to Marine Corps recruiter and I said, I understand that, you know, this is Kansas City, show me state. And he goes, sir, yes it is. And I said, well, I got a proposition for you. I says, if you can sign me up to go on in on a delayed entry program with my other two friends that are signed up in California to go to San Diego on this date, and we graduate on this date, and I can come back and walk through my graduation in my uniform. But I have to be back here by 11.30. And he looked at the clock and it was 9.30 in the morning. And he says, hold on a minute. He walks over and picks up the phone. He hangs up the phone, he goes, I'll take that bet, let's go. Well, within two hours, I had my physical, sworn in, contract, everything. $2,500 combat enlistment bonus, going in on February 7th, uh, along with my other two friends. At that point, I came back and I told my buddies, I said, you know, hey, I'm going to the Marine Corps with you. So, wow, oh, cool, you know, they're all excited and everything else for about a week. And then the principal called us into the office, all three of us. He's like, uh-oh, what do we do now? And he goes, well, I got good news and I got bad news. He goes, what do you want first? And he said, give us the bad news. I figured, getting ready to go to you know, Christmas break, I'm getting ready to graduate, what's he gonna do? Send me home for three days early? And he goes, uh, Mr. Lee, you don't have enough credits to graduate. And he looks and he goes, what? And he goes, Mr. Kelly, these are my two friends. That, and he goes, you don't have enough credits to graduate. And he goes, Mr. Sanderson? And he says, yeah. And he goes, you got 30 credits more than you need to graduate. Cool, so what's the bargaining chip here? And he goes, what do you mean? And I said, well, how many credits do they need to graduate? And he goes, well, he needs 10 and I need five. Or, and I said, okay, well, I got 30. I'll give him 10, give him five, call it good, we're still going in. You can write it up, they ain't gonna know no difference. Oh, I can't do that. So I need to say, they couldn't go in. They had to stay in the school year. In the meantime, I'm going in by myself. January 1st of that year, one of my buddies that talked to me going to the Marine Corps shot me in the face with the 37 Magnum. It went in right here and came out back there at uh, about that close. And uh, luckily it didn't hit any part of my jaw or nothing. Everything was fine. It was just a flesh wound. Um, they flew two surgeons from San Francisco up because they didn't want to transport me. Uh, one of them was talking about putting a glass tube in my cheek. It's like, uh, that ain't working. I'm going in the Marine Corps. And he goes, you ain't going anywhere, son. And uh, it's like, yeah, I am. You know, I'm fine. Well, by this point, my face was black and blue from powder burns. I couldn't talk. And so he gave me a chalkboard to write. Well, well Marine Corps recruiter comes in and he starts reading off and it, they're releasing me from my contract and all that. And I'm thinking, wonderful. I'm graduating in a week. Ain't got no place to go, ain't got a college, ain't got nothing. And it's like, oh, I'm going to the Marine Corps. 
And about the time he opened up the door, I threw my chalkboard that he gave me to write on at the door. Not at him, but at the door, and it hit real close to him. He turned around, and I waved him back, and I wrote down that, you know, my dad always taught me that if you tell somebody you're going to do something, you're going to do it. And I'm going in your Marine Corps on February 7th. Well, he read it, and he got handed it to the nurse, and she read it to him, and he popped to attention and saluted me, and he said, I'd be glad to have you, Marine. There's uh, yellow footprints out in front of the MCRD Marine Corps Recruit Depot. They always pick you up the day before, put you in a motel, fly you or bus you to MCRD. You're on, you sit in the bus probably three to four hours after you step on, and there's a reason for it. And uh, you're told to sit on the bus, don't say anything. You'll, you pull up to MCRD, and uh, the drone instructor comes on, the bus driver gets off and says, good luck, boys. You'll be men when you come out. And he steps off the bus, and all of a sudden the drill instructor comes up and he shot the top of his lungs, and he says, uh, you know, welcome to MCRD. Uh, this is gonna be your home for the next 72 days, maggots. And that's counting 72 days once you're picked up by a platoon. So at that point, you have three seconds to get off the bus on those yellow footprints, and it started two seconds ago. And he blew a whistle and says, go. And everybody's scrambling, and, and he goes, and you, you know, everybody's lining up. And you sit there for four to six hours, standing up, attention on those yellow footprints. You were there for 72 days. There was no if, ands, or buts. Once you go through those gates, you ain't coming out of those gates. There ain't no, I decided I don't want to do this. No, you signed your Donna Dodd line, now we own you. And um, yeah, there was a few instances in boot camp where kids decided they didn't want to do it no more. Uh, thought they could just say, I don't want to do it no more, and wrote a letter of resignation. And you know, that's forensic files or don't happen. <laughs> and uh, one kid jumped out of the second story balcony window, hotel balcony window, feet first broke both his legs, they put him in a med medical platoon for eight weeks and ran him back through boot camp right from day one all the way through. And he only had 10 days to go. 10 more days he'd have graduated, it'd been all over. But no, he played stupid, jumps out the window, feet first, break both his ankles. They recycle him eight weeks and then he had to start boot camp all over again. And then once he graduated boot camp, they gave him a medical discharge telling him he wasn't fit for him. Service. I was dealing with artillery rounds, you know, tracking artillery rounds. That's what my primary march, primary MOS was, was radar crewman. That's we tracked artillery rounds. And uh, six months after I was stationed at Camp Pendleton, we went out to 29 Palm for Gallon Eagle exercise. That's when the Iran Contra stuff was going on. And uh, while we were out there, our position got hit by four artillery rounds. Killed a good friend of mine with another kid that I told you about. Um, within the amount of time I'm talking to you, you could walk to the door and come back when it happened. So it could have easily been me. And uh, I learned a lot from that. So um, from that point, I realized that any job I do, I'm going to do the best I can at it. And if I don't know how to do it, I'm going to ask. And I'll be, I'm not going to get somebody killed. And that's one reason I've dedicated my life to helping the community and uh, helping others. When you're out in the field, no liquor's allowed. You can't have any boots. Well, we get admin stand down days where we're just standing down and they'll give us two beers or, you know, sodas or whatever you want. But no hard alcohol. <clears throat> so I was going to main site, so I snuck into the PX and I got a couple bottles of Jack Daniels and some rum and some vodka and I hit it in my gas tank in my Jeep. Tied a string onto it and tied it to the chain and dropped it down. So when I came to the checkpoint, you know, they checked the Jeep, everything's fine. And, off you go. It's like, huh, huh, I could have C4 in my gas tank. You didn't know it, but I got away from my liquor, so I'm happy. So we're in line and we're, you know, we, this is where they say you want two sodas, you want two beers, and if it is, what do you want? You know, even though you say Coors, they give you butter. 
Say make love, you get butt. You know what, that's all it is, butt. So everybody knew I'd like my beer. And uh, I got up there and I said, two sodas. The gunnery sergeant was right next to me and the captain was next to him. And they both looked at me and he says, I want some of what you got. Well, I already knew I was busted out because I normally want my beer. But with the booze I brought, we needed mix. So I had everybody getting sodas and you know, so we can make mixed drinks. <coughs> so I go get the gunnies and captain's canteen cups, put ice in them, I mix them a beverage and put them off to bed and I share with the rest of the platoon. And uh, pretty soon I get woke up with uh, one of my PFCs on guard duty calling cadence at two o'clock in the morning in his underwear. And uh, at that point, the gunny's light about came on, I could see it moving around. And uh, I looked at one of my other corporals and I said, get him. Well, three of them was on him, had him gagged, tagged, had another PFC out there, walking guard within the amount of time that the gunny could get out of his tent, want to know what's going on. And everybody's like, well, what do you mean, gunny? There ain't nobody yelling out here. And he goes, yeah, I heard somebody yelling. And he goes, no, no, we didn't hear nothing, gunny. He goes back in and yeah, I still to this day, he's done another different. But uh, yeah, so that was a fun experience. And right when I looked up, he's got his M16 with the bayonet on it. He goes right shoulder, arms, and he brings it over and he flings that thing up over and it comes down and lands right in the barrel. First, right in the sand. It was crazy. Were you awarded any medals or citations or any promotions that were, you know? Yeah, I, I, I was promoted from PFC to Lance Corporal, from Lance Corporal to Corporal, from Corporal to Sergeant. Um, I got a good conduct ribbon. Um, I think I got a humanitarian aid award for one of the things we did. At that point, I came home for two weeks and I was contemplating whether to stay in. It was right after we got blown up second time and uh, killed another friend of mine and it's like you know what um, I thought I could change things but I can't change everything around me and uh, I think I just want to get out and give it a try um, but yeah no I just went in did my job and got out and uh, what was cool was a year after I got out uh, it was my birthday and I came home and I had 27 out of my 32 troops sitting in my living room for a surprise birthday party. That was cool. Then I became a volunteer fireman. Uh, I've gotten active with the VFW and the Moose Lodge, both here in town. I uh, do what I can to give back to the community. If we have a fire, I do the animal evacuations. I rescue large animals. Um, I work the bear fire. Uh, every fire in the last five years I've worked. Uh, campfire. Um, I just do what I do to try to help people.